Hello, welcome to Starter and Review. My name is Andre C. I am your co-host, and with great with me here is my co-host, Melball. How you doing, Melball? I am doing amazing. What an end to the tournament. I can't wait to get started on talking about this, Andre. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. It like I like I you like you said, it was a great end to a to me, a spectacular tournament throughout. I don't think there was a bad night of wrestling outside of maybe night 20 because there was only two two five star matches, and I can't fault that. I can't fault the tournament for that. But I had such a great time watching watching all the these women do such a great job with everything that they were doing. And this the way it was a long show to cap it off. I will say that. And with who the winner mentioning it was a four hour show at the end. It wasn't quite as much for us because everything was cut up a little bit. But 13, mm-hmm. 13 matches plus the coronation ceremony after the after the five star finals. So. It, it was a it was a big show. It took me a couple of days to get through watching it all. Plus, I, had, I have to watch it while I'm at work too. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. I actually was that person who was like very very organized about watching everything up until yesterday when I realized I was only three matches deep into this thing and mm-hmm. I had to catch up on the rest of it. I literally finished the finals match during my lunch break today, and I it was a great way to spend my lunch break. I'll tell you that right now. Hey, I mean, that's better than me. I finished the last match two hours before we're coming on to do this. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, it, it, your, your memory is going to be very fresh for that match. It's sharp. <laughs> All right. So we are going to get into the final night, night 21, the, fi- the finals of the five-star Grand Prix. And we, we are starting... Ooh, uh, wrong, ba- <laughs> wrong banner. Cut stuff off. All right, here we go. <laughs> so we are starting with one of my favorites, Saida, taking on one of your favorites, Mariah. Yeah, yeah. And what a heavy hitting match. I mean, did we really expect any less coming from no, both no. of these women? Mirai coming in this year and really establishing herself. I mean, she came in like a quiet riot, is what I, I describe her as. The, Very the much com- so opposite of Thecla, who's just loud and out there and the high speed kind of person. She was kind of the smiley one who was just sitting there like, Hey, I'm powerhouse. How are you? And yeah, but Oh, one good comment. If you notice with <laughs> the names of this, t- on this show, I have put the point totals where the they're at on the final night. So in this night um, to this match, neither women can technically win this match. Yeah. No or win this tournament by winning this match, because Mariah would only get to 15, which ties Julia's current point to of 15. Mm -hmm. Even if Julia loses, she is facing Suzu, Suzu, if she does lose, she's facing Suzu Suzuki, who's at 14 and would get the win. If they did a draw, uh, Julia would move to 16 points. So Mm -hmm. both of these women are not eligible to win, but it was still a good match throughout. And like Mm -hmm. Saeed getting to really work with a veteran like Mirai, I think both women just, it was, was, again, like you said, a very hard hitting affair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the end though, Mirai was able to submit Ida with that funky little submission thing. I, you're better like with the names, man. I don't honestly know the name of this one, but it's kind of like a half surfboard. Like she doesn't mm-hmm. have like all, but it's like she's pulling with the one arm and the one leg, and with kind of like the knee in the back, and like pulling mm-hmm. back. So it's like a half surfboard, and yeah, it was uh, quite a good match. Mariah does end up with 15 points, but again, mm-hmm. only ties Julia, who does have a match later on. The worst she can do is not point, but then her opponent would actually get to 16. So Mariah is mathematically eliminated from mm-hmm. this match because as was determined, count outs get you is it considered a draw. So both person get points. And so it's just, it's going Mariah. Sadly, even though she had a wonderful match here, getting the win is eliminated. Mm-hmm. But what an opportunity for her being this is her first tournament coming out of the gates and coming up to tie with the finalists. Like, yeah, with 15, yeah, 15 <laughs> points is nothing to sneeze at. No. Like, that's a real like that. Like, that is a really great like position. You're one of the top finishers. I think mm-hmm. actually the second place finisher 
by the end of the night, I think. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, she's the second place finisher, I think, or third. One of the two. I'll let, I will let you know as we move on. But we yeah, she placed very high for her first tournament. But again, Mariah is a very experienced professional wrestler, though. That is the other thing. So her experience has really carried her in this. But yeah, did not get a chance to uh, win this one out. We are moving on to the second match of the evening. It is, it is Natsupoi taking on Mina Shirakawa. And again, Natsupoi with 12, Mina with, with 8. Your minimum number you would need to be a, in a contender would be 14 points coming into the night. Mm-hmm. And uh, neither of these women were, were able to uh, point up the right thing. But this match actually was very, very enjoyable, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, both Again, Battle of the Cosmic Angels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, so teammate, ver- teammate versus teammate. I really thought, great job. Uh, Again, mm-hmm. like, Mina Shirakawa, she just – she just zeroes in on people's knees, man. Like just just wrecks them for that finisher she has of the figure four, and that really you could see it by the towards the end of this match, just really limping on that knee, like mm-hmm. like it was really being worked over. But again, Natsupoi with just so much such a such a beautiful move set in my opinion. We talked about her on the last episode. That her kneeling spin kick, I it just I I've never seen anybody do a kick quite as well performed as that one is with the theatrics to it. And then the kick itself is usually pretty dang hard. Um, but just both these women just killing each other. Um, but Mina Shirakawa loving that dragon screwed leg whip in this, in this one too. Really, really, really dialing up that Tanahashi, I would say. And really working that knee. She, Cause she got a dragon screw off the top rope. And then yeah. Followed- yeah, and then followed up with another before applying the figure four leg lock, and Natsupoi had nowhere to go, and she she had to tap out, and she did mm-hmm. lose this match. So Natsupoi does end the tournament with twelve points. Great showing, don't get me wrong. Twelve points is a great showing. That means you got six wins. That is a great great place to be and mm-hmm. Mina Shirakawa with 10 meaning five wins for her again nothing to sneeze at you can't can't get mad at somebody for 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 that many wins it's it, not everybody can win in this tournament it happens mm-hmm. people are going to lose but yeah I thought wonderful match from the two of them I have to agree everything you said there um this match was very much so um I, I felt very personal um from mm-hmm. start to finish um, I definitely felt um, a sense of a more sense of urgency out of Mina than I did of Natsupoi in regards to wanting to win um, based on obviously her, her working and, and getting that leg targeted and stuff like that. But I think she knew like, like we obviously knew that both of them were already mathematically eliminated going into yeah. this night and neither one of them could change that. I think what Mina did in this situation was turn her attention to what it is that Natsupoi has that she does not, which is the goddess um, of stardom championship with Tam Nakano. I think that this opportunity, this win over Natsupoi um, sets her and potentially Unagi um, Say- Sayaka up for a potential further rivalry um potentially with her and um again sayaka against natsupoi and tam Nakano chasing the goddess of uh, stardom champions i wouldn't be mad about that but to the point um actually i know i read it on twitter mina shirakawa has said she is determined to make her way into going after that world of stardom the, the world of stardom mm-hmm. championship mm-hmm. uh she has main intentions that she and she plans her, one of her intentions is to become the leader of Cosmic Angels. Is another thing she said in this in the same in the same statement. She wants to take the leadership and she wants to be the be the champion soon. So, I mean, Tam Nakano, obviously one of of my favorites and obviously one of yours as well. But mm-hmm. um, like from when I've started watching in, at the end of December of uh, last year. Um, you have seen, like I had mentioned with my Sakurai, my Sakurai was a part of the Cosmic Angels. There was no growth. There was no development. Her her ability did not get any better. It, I actually personally thought that she was actually getting worse. Her hmm. switch up to join Donna Del Mondo was an incredible turnabout. And look at how positively we have talked about her. 
Um, that being said, is that maybe speaking to um, that there is a lack of leadership happening within the cosmic angels that maybe needs to be reevaluated? Um, I yeah. don't know how long Tam Nakano has been the leader of the cosmic angels. So, you know, maybe it Not is sure. time for a bit of a switch up, you know, with her focusing so much on that Sepoy right now. You know, she might not have the time to focus on the other cosmic angels. So maybe it would be a good opportunity for them to to kind of throw that wrench into there. Yeah, it, it, it's and I can see it being like I, I know every year they have points where they draft people from other teams mm -hmm. and you leave your team. So like, could this be a position in a way to for her to put Mina to push Tam out me in a pause as a possibility. Oh, new faction. Yeah, no, push like push I'll Tom push out to another team, and then oh. if she can get Tom to be drafted to another team, could she be the one to take that position? That that is another question because she said she says she mm. wants to be the leader. So it, it's it's could you be never know. You never know. And as I look at the the Cosmic Angels team, it shows Tom Nakano, Mina Shirakawa, and Nagi Sayaka as three founding members back in November 14th of 2020. And it shows her as the leader. It doesn't show anybody else with the leader mark at any point. So I think Tom Nakano has been the leader the entire time. Hmm, interesting. So we might see some upheaval in Cosmic Angels or could result in maybe Mina Shirakawa leaving the Cosmic Angels if she can't take the leadership it, that's another possibility too i mean i know some couple places here that would definitely like to hire her if she's looking to do a north american tour or just head it to another team like maybe mm -hmm. she might have success with another team maybe she joins a, maybe she joins an outside faction like prominence and goes like as a, almost independent you never know she, it could be anything it, you, there's there's many possibilities what can go forward with minish Shirakawa and cosmic angels themselves so mm -hmm. all i know is that i have a lot of faith in their creative departments so whatever it is that they're planning give it to us we're good we're ready for it please, please. <laughs> so we are moving on to the next match of the evening it is hazuki taking on momo watanabe and like i said the magic number is 14 you have to have at least 14 points tonight in your matches to have a shot at, at uh, taking taking the crown, at least in the Blue Stars block. Mm -hmm. The Red Stars is a whole other craziness. But yeah, mm -hmm. in the Blue Stars block, um, so Hazuki does have a shot at taking the, taking the lead in the Blue Stars block in this match, taking on Momo Watanabe. The one thing from Hazuki is she went seven straight in the beginning. Then she dropped six matches, or sorry, yeah. Uh, sorry, five matches in a row. Yeah, so yeah. Just 14 people per block, right? Correct. Something like that. And so that means you wrestle 13 total matches. She's dropped five total matches in a row. That She's on a losing streak. Mm -hmm. And going against someone like Momo Watanabe, who is brutal in her own right in the style she works and who she has backing mm -hmm. her up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and to be honest, like this match kind of started out the way I expected. Um, you know, the jump start from a way to tie, um, the house of torture antics. Yeah, like wherever Momo, wherever Starlight Kid, wherever Cash Masaki is involved, um, it's very obvious that a way to tie is kind of going to be waiting in the rafters. They're always in the wings. It's all they're always <laughs> they're the wings. always there. Um, I was concerned at the beginning of this match. It, it did seem like the beatdown at the beginning there did go quite long. Um, Hazuki did come back with authority, though. Um, very, oh, very for sure. Yeah, very, very quickly. Um, there is a move that she does that I always forget the move, and it's very, it's very simple. I feel very stupid for always forgetting it. Um, Samoa Joe has made it very popular, the one where you jump and you just land on your back on the person. Oh, sent on. Sent on, okay. The Colton Kelly special, come on. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, I'm like, Colton Kelly also does it. <laughs> yeah. Um, lo uh, lo Jonah. Wonderful local professional wrestler here in the Edmonton area. Yes, go check out Colton Kelly. He is just amazing. Um, but that being said, um, Tazuki had one of those off the top rope 
Um, again, House of Torture shit, doing House of Torture stuff. Um, Momo, I think, was able to do um, a finisher, but was not able to um, initially um, capitalize on that initial uh, finisher. Then she well, actually had to Kazuki get... Too. Yeah, like, well, and yeah. then they got the chair involved, and um, yeah. she did her her finisher to Hazuki on the chair, and then um, the chair got m removed. The ref was released from his timeout in the corner with Rina, and um, yeah, another finisher was fed to Hazuki, resulting in uh, unfortunately Momo and Tanabe uh, re receiving those last two points to bring her to twelve. Yeah. Um, this match, it wasn't as torturous as the usual no Oedo Tai um, I, I, matches. I didn't enjoy it as much. Like uh, the cup, well, last episode, I actually featured as my pick a mm -hmm. Momo Watanabe mm -hmm. match, who which had far less interference from Oedo Tai. Mm -hmm. It was the, maybe the initial stuff at the top and a couple small little things. Mm -hmm. This was littered with Oedo Tai's fingerprints all over this match. Mm -hmm. I... Like the chair getting involved, then pull the ref out. I just, it really. I was just, I was reading it when they pulled. Once they pulled the ref out, because that was the big spot mm -hmm. for uh, Hazuki hitting two Mishinoku drivers in a row, then a brainbuster for mm -hmm. three of two her two finishers, a brainbuster mm -hmm. and excuse me, the the Mishinoku driver. Mm -hmm. It really. I was like. Uh -huh. she's not going to win this, is she? And then, like, the numbers game and the cheating game came into mm -hmm. effect. Momo getting her Peach Sunrise, that half Nelson driver. And sadly for Hazuki, with going seven straight off the top and then go and then having six straight losses. I like. I remember us talking about it after the first when we did from the first twelve nights when we were talking about those matches. After those first ones, we were like sure Hazuki was going to win the block, mm -hmm. and to see her stalled out at fourteen points after going getting those fourteen in the first seven match, it, it just it really hurts. And mm -hmm. to see it happen this way, in the fact that Oedo Tai cheated her out of. 16 points mm -hmm. and that's and a, a really good chance of taking the block. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it hurt. It really did. Cause I, um, I, I think yeah, she had, she, so if Julia would have had a draw in, it, or if she would have a draw in her match coming up after and Hazuki had won, they would have tied at 16. Hazuki beat Julia in her first seven matches there. So mm -hmm. she would have had the tiebreaker victory over Julia, which would have given her the a birth into the finals if that was the case. If 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 she had gotten sixteen and Julia got a draw, but not to be. It was Hazuki getting screwed out of out of the blue the the Blue Stars champ win. Mm -hmm. What was that? She was for me the Cinderella story kind of coming into this because like I knew she was dominant. She was the, uh, I think they were the Goddess of Ch uh, Stardom Champions, her and Kaguma, when they first, um, when the and first her first 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 first. Up at all. Yeah, and, and to, you know, she picked up some very dominant wins at the beginning. Oh, really? I definitely feel like she was definitely given the short end of the stick at the last part of this. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also don't feel it takes away from her at all. Um, because she is going to continue to come out here and show oh. up. I think, I, I think getting the 14 points and having the performances she did in the first half of this tournament, mm -hmm. and then the performances she had in the back half tournament where she was losing, and I think she, one of them losses was to Saya Kamatami, the current mm -hmm. wonder of stardom champion. Uh, you, can't, you can't not say she is – a top star. She's at least mm -hmm. a wonder of stardom championship contender 100%. at this point. I think she has to be considered in there, if not into the world mm -hmm. of stardom championship, the red belt at some point soon. She's mm -hmm. definitely in content. She has to be in contention for the, the white belt at least, at least. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
So from here, we are going to move on to our yeah. next match in the evening. It is Saya Kamatami, the current cha- Wonder of Stardom champion, the white belt holder, taking on Amy Saray. But again, like I said, the magic number is 14, and both these women can't get past 15 points. Sad, sad to say, especially with Saya Kamatami, having a wonderful tournament as she has had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had a very um, interesting tournament. It was kind of like a, an up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down for her. She she kind of would take a win, take a loss, take a win, take a loss. Um, that's usually what I expect out of, of the regular kind of um, like participants in something like this. Um, this match in particular, um, I noticed Ami um, right away um, tried to be very dominant very quickly. Um, tried to put down Kamatani and, and pin her and like, just hit her as hard as she could very, very quickly to, I almost felt like it was, she was trying to end the match as quickly as possible so that she didn't have to contend with Kamatani. But that being well, said, I mean, Kamatani. But anytime you're in the ring with a champion, you want to get that win as fast as possible because mm-hmm. you want a win. So that 100%. means you have a win over a champion and it just gives her a better positioning coming out at the end with more points looking mm-hmm. better too. So her going for that quickly, but again, there's, there was a lot of reverses in this, Ooh, but yeah. I did, I gotta say I, I, as much as I, I am pr- I'm impressed by Saya Kamatani, I've noticed some sloppy stuff from her over, the, over the tournament. And, mm-hmm. but as good as she is, again, not everybody can get sloppy, but I've seen more than I think I should with mm-hmm. someone on her level, but uh, like I still think she's a wonderful talent and she's doing mm-hmm. great. And I don't see a, a, anything bad coming to her. But mm-hmm. it, when you see sloppy things every couple of matches from such a high end player in a company, it, it, it's like eh, maybe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought it was a very good match from both these women. I w- and there was a big brawl on the floor at the end. Mm-hmm. Where they fought up the ramp, and uh, was it uh, Amy? Uh, 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 sorry, Ami getting the Green Bay plunge on the ramp, mm-hmm. and they both crawl and fight to get back, but neither makes it. So it ends up with a uh, count out draw. Yeah. Both women getting one point. Sasai Kamatani finishes with the magic number of 14. But that's her finish number, so she cannot win it. Nor can Amy Saray, who finishes it with eleven points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what a fun match that they um, they had. I mean, I, I did appreciate the um, the double countout. It did break up everything because you know I appreciate the having the submissions and the pins. But every once in a while, I like to have that chaos or that ending. That's like, oh no, what happened, you guys? And I felt like this was one of them, and I wasn't mad about it. I felt it was a very appropriate end. I felt that it actually added to the entertainment of the night. Oh, very much so. It, it, again, and it, it wasn't a super long match either, which I think was mm-hmm. a great breakup. And the fact that they did the count, it was different. So people were looking at it differently, seeing mm-hmm. something different happen. And it's it just, again, very disappointed that Isaiah Kamatani can't make it. But again, was I'm already mathematically eliminated before going into the night because mm-hmm. did not have a match number of, of uh, 14. But we move on to the uh, next match of the evening, and it is – oops, where's my button? There it is. It is Mayu Iwatani taking on Starlight Kid. Again, in this position, Mayu is not number – it cannot make it. But no. – uh, Starlight Kid does have a win over Julia. So if Starlight Kid can win and Julia can only get a draw, Starlight Kid will have the tiebreaker victory over Julia and can move on mm-hmm. to the to the and move on to the final to the final match of the night. And honestly, I thought this was a banger of a match from both these ladies. 100%. I really like how both of these um, women play their characters. Um, Mayu Iwatani, I mean, I, I've said before, she she does have this reckless disregard for herself. And I don't know if you noticed it, but her legs very much so uh, showing the um, her, I, I'm, a, I'm going to assume her little stair trip the night before. Yeah. Um, there's a big, big there was, well, this, That would have been what about four or five days before because that happened on the 25th. This was on October 1st, but even then, you could still see some bruises on her. Yeah, huge, huge bruises on her legs there. Yeah, they were. Yeesh. 
Um, but that being said, you could see um, Starlet Kid at the beginning of the match trying to pull some some bullshit is what she was trying to pull, trying to shake uh, my Mayu Iwatani's hand. Mayu Iwatani obviously untrusting. And these girls were not a part of a faction her. known for their you know, kosherness. Suck, um, but you gotta know. Saki Kashima tries to do it every time. She yeah. don't, you, and she's, she she cheats every time that somebody shakes her hand. So why right? would you trust her like kid? Exactly. What yeah. I did appreciate um, right after that, though, was the little chop battle that they had back and forth, both of them being known for their chops. But Starlight Kid really getting pissed off at, at Mayu and just chopping her so rapidly that Mayu couldn't actually respond. And she actually ended up getting chopped down to the ground before mm -hmm. um, Starlight Kid fed her that last double chop, knocking her clearly and pl uh, flatly to the ground. Um, there was one move that Mayu did in particular that I thought was just absolutely incredible. Um, it was a submission style move that almost looked like um, a skull end, but it was, she was standing and um, Starlight Kid's feet were on opposite sides of, of her hips. And Mayu was standing in kind uh, of, uh, it was a stand, it was a standing dragon sleeper. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, I if was you have somebody on the other mat, you grab them and you grab them and pull them back. Which is essentially the cold skull. Mm -hmm. It's a dragon sleeper. This is one she just has the legs propped up on her legs and yeah. is pulling back. And that's essentially a standing dragon sleeper. I do have that okay. right now. Anyway. Utterly yeah. incredible. Like seeing her oh. get into that, I was like, what in the Sam heck is this besides amazing? Um, mm -hmm. I honestly thought she had her at that point. I don't know how you escape from something like that, but uh, Starlight Kid did kind of figure out her way. Of course, there was obviously some. House of Torture, tortureness happening in there. Not nearly. Yeah, the Oedo tie of it all. <laughs> yeah, but this one I did feel that it wasn't terribly no. as much as as usual, which was a blessing. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't what the Hazuki and uh, and Momo Atanabe match was. Not exactly. even close. Exactly. So. I don't think we could have handled two of those in one night, to be honest. And, um, and I think well, and with that point, is they're not like you don't need like it's the cheatings from a different point. Cause like Momo was trying to screw up Hazuki's tournament mm -hmm. where Starlight kid needs this win. Mm -hmm. So the cheating has to be to a point where, mm -hmm. it, where it's doing something completely to benefit Starlight kid. It can't be just stuff to screw with Mayu because that could backfire on Starlight kid. So you need mm -hmm. to make sure it's something that, sets your person ahead so mm -hmm. you can't cheat to the same degree when you need your person to come out in winning in the end but in the right way because mm -hmm. because a, mm -hmm. a draw wouldn't have would have screwed them up mm -hmm. screwed, wouldn't put her in but she needed the flat out win yeah luckily for us though she didn't get it and maya was able to pin starlight kid <laughs> for with, with a, a beautiful crate with a beautiful uh, uh, bridging dr dragon suplex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful end to that match. Couldn't have happened to a better girl. <laughs> so in the end, Mayu Iwatani ends with 15 points again. So yeah, tied for that uh, second spot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's you look at it and you go, wow, what like this the amount of stuff we've had in this tournament is just purely impressive. Mm -hmm. just just so impressive it, it's you you really look at I, I i again i i the one person out of this entire company that i was regularly familiar with coming into st watching stardom with you mm -hmm. was mayu iwatani because mm -hmm. of her time in ring of honor i was a fan of her there she was the women of honor champion so she was one of the few people i actually knew and boy howdy has she she again she, She's been very good in this, in this, in this. But mm -hmm. I have been so impressed with Starlight Kid. Like, there's been a couple where I was like, eh. but I like, I can see why there's the fandom for Starlight Kid that there is. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent, yeah. So from here, we are moving on to the final match in the Blue Stars. It all comes down to this match in the Blue Stars block. It mm -hmm. is Julia with 15 points taking on Suzu Suzuki with 14 points. Like I said, the magic number was 14, and you had to have a win over Julia with that magic number, which a couple people did. The call comes down to this. Suzuki Suzuki can win. She wins the Blue Stars block. 
If Julia can get a draw or win, she wins the Blue Stars block. No matter what, Julia just can't lose. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. And what a match we had. This Ooh, match. Howdy. Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive from start to finish, fighting for that top spot. These women knew where what, what was at stake, and they were letting us have every little bit of it. Um, there was a um, – we talked about this move yesterday when we saw local favorite do it to a, a certain young guy. What is it called, Andre? I don't remember what you're talking about. The sliding German. Oh, oh, through the rope. I got into the rope. Yes. I oh, call it yeah. the Mori. We saw nasty. Yeah, it's, just, it's, just a sli- it's just a sliding German through the ropes and just, just a nasty looking German, man. Just so people like oh, land nasty. on the top of their head. Like oh. they land on the top of their head coming off the second rope and, and going, falling backwards. It's just, uh, I but yeah, there's this, it's just such a brutal match between these two. Like the kicks, mm-hmm. the, the punches, the forearms. Mm-hmm. Like, holy crap, the headbutts. <laughs> like, Julia yeah. likes to headbutt people, mm-hmm. but so does Suzu. Holy yeah, she crap. cackles about it, just like Minoru. She cackles about it. There's just, it just, like, the, she hits her finisher, the tequila shot at one point, only gets a two. Like mm-hmm. that's it. Let's let's finish matches for her in this tournament. Mm-hmm. Like goes for the like. Suzu gets the rolling chaos theory. What she won, the what she won her last match with the the match was a night nineteen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that Julia kicks out of. That's a finish for her. That's finished matches for her. Mm-hmm. Like it. It's crazy. Ju- Again, Julia hitting her Falcon Arrow, hitting multiple of her finishers, and still can't get it. She, she I think she hit her uh, Hammerlock Driver, like the ape shit, and yeah. still couldn't finish. Like, oh, it just, it was such a big, like, I, I think this might have been, if it wasn't for the main event, match of the night. Oh, 100%. Um, and it ended in a 15 minute draw because again, all matches, mm-hmm. tournament matches are contested under 15 minute time limits. Mm-hmm. And again, all Julia needed to do was survive, mm-hmm. and she did. She got her one point, so it ends with Julia at 16 points atop the Blue Stars block with Suzu Suzuki taking 15 points. And I have to give a huge shout out to Suzu Suzuki. At 20 years old, being tied for second place in the Blue Stars block is no small feat. No, especially for your first tournament. Your first Mm -hmm. time in the tournament. If this this is what she's capable of doing in her first round, imagine what she's going to do next year. Like, like Like I said on the last episode, if she intends to be like full time with stardom because again she's with prominence which is which is an outside faction Mm -hmm. and i don't know if she is like if she's working freelance with stardom or not i don't know that kind of stuff it's just contract wise which some girl a lot of girls do work freelance for stardom Mm -hmm. if she decides to make this her home promotion I think the sky is the limit for Suzu Suzuki to be the next big star for stardom. I have to agree with you. I have been very high on this girl since I I first saw her. And um, I actually managed to uh, hop on with uh, our good friend Carl at one point. And he, the first thing he asked me is who do you recommend in stardom? Suzu Suzuki was the first person that came to my mind on who everybody should definitely check out. I 100% agree with you. If if this is just the beginning for her, and I hope it is, Sky really is the limit for her. Very much so. And it, 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 like I said, you have. Uh, I just gotta pull the tab up. Give me one second. I just want to go over the numbers for the blue block, okay. uh, the blue stars block. I just need. I forgot that I closed the tab. Not realizing it, <laughs> but I have it literally now. Oh, put the number there. I'm using a new keyboard today. 
<laughs> it's shaped all weird, so it's screwing me up. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> I, I'm sorry for the dead air, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, yeah, so just to go over the final standings for Blue Stars, mm -hmm. you have again, like I said, Julia winning the Blue Stars block with 15 point or 16 points. 16, yeah. Uh, then you have Mirai, mm -hmm. Mayu Iwatani, and the young first time around 20 year old Suzu Suzuki with 15 points. That is huge. Mm -hmm. Like they sit a slot. Like again, Mariah, you said I think was her first tournament too. Or, I'm yeah. not sure. I think so. Again, yeah. Those two, two people with the first tournament, and then Hazuki sad end to back into her tournament, but she's sitting there at 14 points along with Saya Kamatani, Starlight Kid, and Starlight Kid. That is a great place for Hazuki to be again younger mm -hmm. and will move up in this company and then Natsupoi and Momo Watanabe with 12 points Amy Sure with 11 Mina Shirakawa with 10 and then Saya Ida and Hanan with four points again I and no fault to their four points mm -hmm. again very young mm -hmm. and so there there's always in every tournament and I know this from watching the G1 every year some people just have to lose Mm -hmm. And it, it, it happens every single year. There's always people that take a majority of losses, but they mm -hmm. they they only build they only build up from there. Simple as mm -hmm. that. These girls are gonna build up and they're gonna have better showings next showing next year. That's a simple 100%. fact. That is simple. a simple fact. Yeah, so from here, we are going to move on to the Red Stars side of the final night of this tournament. Again, I didn't realize it was all blue and then all red, but when I saw that, I'm like, oh, interesting. That but makes it, sense. Again, <laughs> I guess it's, it's, to tell a, it's to tell a certain story. You want to tell the Blue Stars story, then you're going to tell mm -hmm. the Red Stars story, and then you're going to give us the finals. Mm -hmm. But we did get uh, – Mel went away. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I'm not good at this. I, I'm really not. Uh, Momo Kogo taking on Unagi Sayaka. And Sayaka was, again, Unagi was the big surprise for me in this tournament. And the fact that on the final night, has only won one match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then and Momo look at the attitude she's been having for it, too. <laughs> Yeah, and then Momo Kogo with four again, very young in her career. She's mm -hmm. in that again in that position where, and both these girls in that position where somebody has to take the losses in a tournament like this, and it is these two. Momo being very young, Inagi Saka. I have no idea why she's taking these losses, but I, I think she should have been far more featured in this tournament. But mm -hmm. all that all together said. I thought I, I really quite had a good time with this match. Again, I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of Unagi Saka and Momokogo from night one of this tournament really impressed me. Like I love her style, the six one nine, the spring point <laughs> drop kick. I love her. I, I just really do. Then Unagi Saka with her wild, very wild style. I very much like that in the fact that she does like the le the jumping leg drop, the just just some wild mm -hmm. style of of moving. I, I, I quite like it. Mm -hmm. Nagi did hit, did hit uh, the Jeff Jarrett special, the stroke, and then mm -hmm. followed it by a kick to, kick to the head and then a DDT, but only got a two count out of it. Like mm -hmm. just some of the moves these girls were doing, it, it, it's just, it's just crazy. <laughs> but in, in the end, um, like a, it was Unagi's Sayaka with a butterfly uh, trap. Like she had her in a, like one arm had the butterfly, like had the arm mm -hmm. the butterfly, and then hooked her leg and picked her up and brought her down with a driver. So it was like mm -hmm. a butterfly fisherman's driver, I want to call it. I don't actually know what it's called, but it was a very interesting move in the way that it was applied and mm -hmm. executed. And uh, Unagi Saka getting four points, going up to four points. But I did read that she made an announcement that she is leaving stardom because of her poor, poor she her, 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 her the reason she's given is because of the poor such a poor performance in this five star grand prix she is leaving stardom to move on and be a freelancer and work at and work work at other companies hey i mean that could be very very good for her as i'd mentioned mm -hmm. in, in past videos you know i'm very much a fan of her in ring ability but i didn't feel that her attitude really fit well with with the the cosmic angel faction so you know with that's interesting because with mina talking about wanting to take over the cosmic angels and then sayaka being kind of like her main kind of bestie in that 
problem is it would be interesting. I personally think that that Unagi has nothing but you know things to gain by by oh, traveling yes. and, and you know getting much experience so. elsewhere. So you know, good luck to her. I, I hope it works out, and I hope we see her a little bit more in all these other places. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see like where she goes. I, I, I'm looking forward to following her wherever she goes because I, I, after watching all this tournament start, I really want to start diving into more of the Joshi Pro companies in Japan. Like I already watched New Japan. I watched some Noah. I catch a, uh, a little bit of all Japan when I can, but like I've again, Stardom's the only women's company I've watched. So I like to get look at some Tokyo Joshi Pro, see some other mm -hmm. stuff and see some wave. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have special interest in wanting to see Noah because my favorite uh, bread club leader ended up at uh, <laughs> holding titles there. I don't suspect he's going to be coming back to me anytime soon in New Japan. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, like you said, I think that she has nothing but positivity to gain from that. So I, I definitely hope that we see her a little bit more popping up. And hey, maybe she she could also do a North American tour and pop up in AEW. It's very very possible, and even maybe even an Impact or um, an MLW too. Like it's mm -hmm. very possible. But we are going to move on to the next match in the Red Stars block. It is Azumi taking on Sakagashima, and especially in this block. 14 points you have i think going into the night i want to open up a thing i didn't bring up in the last show we did uh ba, 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 there it is um i think you had six people at 14 points mm -hmm. so in this in this show you really have to look at who like it there's a lot of parts of tiebreakers are involved very much in this one um you really have to see where the heck is that picture uh, <laughs> you oh it's in that one okay uh da, 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 where was it i'm not gonna pull it up on the screen because it's gonna have to load it in and it's just a big old pain in the butt for me to <laughs> do this but uh, like at the end of the red stars night it was on uh the final or the final of the tournament nights um yeah you had uh, Utami Hayashishida with 14, Azumi with 14, Tom Nakano with 14, Micah with 14, Himeka with 14, uh, Suri with 14, and uh, Risa Sarah was 13. Now, the Risa Sarah one at 13, it, uh, unless there was, I think there was a 14 versus 14 match, so no matter what, Risa Sarah couldn't, mm -hmm. I think, get the actual victory in this, but. Man, when you have one, two, three, four, five, six people and a potential seventh who is right there with them, mm -hmm. it, being in line to win this, it's all this this block especially came down to the tiebreakers. It it it, it was all about who if, if the multiple people end up in certain places, it would have been the tiebreakers, and it would have been just a crazy way to figure it all out, but. It didn't come down that way because, huh, this match happened and um, it did. It was really fast. Um, I don't, it wasn't even a minute. Um, uh, Zumi had like the gear she was wearing, it like had like glowing green on it. I loved it, but the Saki wants a handshake and then Azumi like got her in a crucifix, but then. Uh, Kashima flipped it into a roll up, and then so uh, then uh, was it uh, Kashima got it into a, a crucifix of her after they scram were scrambling around trying to get pins on each other. Uh, Kashima got a crucifix and pinned Azumi in less than a minute. Yeah, this yeah. was again, this is very much the Zack Sabre Jr. And uh, Naito match from mm -hmm. uh, one of the final nights of the G1, it, it but it, it breaks up the monotony of it too, mm -hmm. and it's like this quick, like out of nowhere. And I think this win benefits Saki Kashima so much, oh, yeah, because she got a win over for one, the high speed champion. So, mm -hmm. in my opinion, she should get a shot at that belt, mm -hmm. and two, she looked impressive doing it so quickly. Mm-hmm. 
Especially over the how she, her tournament has really kind of gone. Like she is setting at 10 points, but she did take some pretty, pretty big losses as well. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, I mean, Azumi is one of my favorites. This match hurt me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But you're absolutely right. It was something that actually it, it broke up the rest of the night. It still made Azumi look hella strong coming out of it. She's still the champion um, sitting at, at 14 points. But it, you're right. It does kind of set up Kashima for uh, an opportunity at the title as, as well as, um, you know, anybody else who, who did get a win over Azumi. They do like in stardom as opposed to um, New Japan. They do like their like fatal four ways, their triple threats, their those yeah. kinds of matches. So I wouldn't be objective to seeing another you know, triple threat or a fatal four way for the high speed title. And I would love to see it with Thecla getting back into the ring. She with should them. be coming back in the next little bit too. So again, she got pulled wait. out due to injury for the tournament, but it's been a couple mm. months. So I think she has a shot at returning in the next little bit, unless it was a more major injury. I didn't think it was too big of an injury, but enough mm. that she couldn't work the tournament, but I don't think it's a major going to keep her out for a year injury. So I have been snooping yeah. her Twitter. I have been noticing she's posting a little bit more pictures with um, her DDM um, faction members. So here's hoping she's back in Japan and training and feeling better and ready to come back to us and perform for us. Yeah. So from here, we move on to the next match in the red block. Again, this is another match where the 14 points matters to Tommy Hayashishida, the former red belt champion, the former world of starter champion, has a shot at taking this tournament she faces off with the former uh goddess of stardom champion koguma again the person who i thought was such the yano goof then i watched her in that tag team title match and i went okay she is not a goof she knows when to turn on and she did even here even mm -hmm. in this show match she knew when to turn on yeah she did her goofy stuff but mm -hmm. the one there was one part at the start i think it's utami did the bear pose she did the yeah, mm -hmm. I or sorry, I laughed so hard when Tommy started doing the bear pose. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I was like, uh, she like she did she the comedy with, she did the comedy the other night too when she was mm -hmm. with her, she was singing she was singing. Yes, and with, now I'm she's doing her. the bear, now she's doing the bear pose. I'm like, I was just laughing so hard. I'm like, okay, this this, <laughs> just does, this woman does have a heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is why Hayashi Shida is one of my favorite I, I actually claim she is my favorite female wrestler right now um in active kind of wrestling i guess to say yeah she to me can really do no wrong she comes out she looks like a wrestler she acts like a wrestler she wrestles like a wrestler but then she can also n make her opponents have matches that are so great and so incredible, regardless of their skill level, her skill level, she can turn on that goofy factor when she wants to. She can mm -hmm. turn on that serious factor, and it's still Utami Hayashi Shida. Oh, um, yeah. it, this match, again, I, I popped when she did the ears, too. I couldn't not. This match was a great match for both of them. I, I felt overall this was actually a very great showing for Koguma, who up until mm -hmm. this point, I, I feel... She has been performing consistently and well, but she hasn't had something really that people have been continually to talk about. And I feel that Utami was definitely elevating her a little bit in this oh, very much so. to get her to that point to be like, hey, you remember her? She's still a threat. Oh, yeah. She's still a thing. Yeah, like um, there's a beautiful, was it, uh, she was Koguma up on the top rope and hit a beautiful splash to mm -hmm. the floor on Utami, yeah. on Utami. Like just... It, it, it's just some of the stuff they're doing. It, 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 it's it's kind of insane in some of it, but like <laughs> Koguma looked really good mm -hmm. and played to Utami's part so well. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't ever think that I never thought Koguma was going to get the win in here, but, and I thought this was either going to go draw Mm -hmm. Or it was going to come down to to tiebreakers, but mm -hmm. Koguma get it like reversing the the 
hijack bomb into a code red and getting the pin i was just it blew me away the way they ended it i was just mm-hmm. like it took it came for me it's gonna sound stupid out of nowhere mm-hmm. and i was just like yes thank yeah. you i thank you for giving <laughs> me that ending and it yeah. again elevates koguma to a level mm-hmm. like i was we'll talk about when we get to the end of the wrestlers i will tell you she's at 14 points same as the former world of stardom champion that is a great level to be at so 100 percent 100 percent and then right after that pin we were treated to this another is where return. <laughs> this is where i got yeah. really confused so um we saw the return of another Grim Reaper that not related to the Reaper army mentioned in uh, the, the show before um, um, who we th- I personally thought when she was coming down that uh, they were going to confront Koguma. This was not mm. the case. Koguma was not the, uh, the important factor in here. Um, this was um, a, a, a pretty much a confrontation for Utami Hayashi Shida. Um, when Hayashi Shida does, you know, shove and unmask um, the 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 Grim Reaper. We do find that it is a return of not Netsuko Tora, who is the leader of Oedo Tai. Um, she I had was no idea out- who it was even after the <laughs> deal. I was like, who is this? Like, I yeah, really yeah, that is the leader. Like- I call her the Doki of Oedo Tai because she usually is running around with a pipe. So she's so- <laughs> So she's terrible, right? Uh, she's terrible. I haven't right? seen her wrestle because um, when I first the started panic. Riding, she was actually out with a torn ACL. Um, so mm. she has been out of um, ring action for quite some time. Um, so that's what she, it was referred to in the promo that I was reading, like the the subtitles. But yeah, she was out for a while, and then she makes fun of Utami's seven and five record. But I'm like. How can you make fun of a seven and five record? Like <laughs> because that's she a good him. record. <laughs> um, yeah, she as you mentioned, she did cut the promo on uh, Hayashi Shida, making reference to her being out for a bit. At the time, I believe um, Hayashi Shida was actually the uh, world champion, and that um, mm-hmm. Tora was actually to be challenging Hayashi Shida when she got injured. And I believe the promise that was made that um, was Hayashi Shida would hold on to the belt until um, Tora came back. Promise. In yeah, but right it's now. like, girl, you took a year. Like, heal faster. Um, like, I don't know. But in, in that case, um, it does sound like um, Tora has come back, but not to necessarily challenge for the belt right away, but to maybe challenge the person um, who had the belt when she had it. Maybe um, it's it's a, a kind of a, a blood a that, the two that they have. The yeah, but it's definitely going to be a stepping stone for her to go in there to be like, okay, look, I beat a former champion. Now who else can I beat? Because um, to me, like, I again, I haven't seen Natsuko Tora um, in ring. So I don't know what it is that she she's capable of. I don't know what it is that her style is. Um, so, you know, maybe this will be a, a good build for her to get towards – um, that red belt um, title shot eventually. Otherwise, I mean, that being said, Oedo Tai and Queen's Quest, they do have some history, um, especially with losing Momo Watanabe to Oedo Tai um, most recently. So um, that being said, I think that there's going to be a lot of, of passion in this feud. I think there's going to be a lot of emotional charge. And I actually am really looking forward to to how they're going to to take it into the future. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. Again, I don't know really anything about this lady, I'm sorry to say, mm-hmm. but I, I look forward to seeing what's coming because, again, it's obviously the next program for Hayao Shishida, So, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, of course, to me, she, she can really do no wrong. It's going to be a banger. So from here, we move on to the next match in the Red Stars, the third last match in, of the – tournament side and it is tom nakano taking on saki mm-hmm. i uh, this match was so good <laughs> like so good i got notes after notes after notes. tell us after about notes. it andre oh uh, like just, just overall just these girls just killed it like from the hop there was just they were just going from the hop um tom literally goes up to the top rope for a cross body and 
she misses, and then Saki just runs at her, just smokes her with a big boot. And this is like a few, just a couple minutes in, mm-hmm. but like just the the forearm exchanges from both his girls, like especially with how small Tom is, <laughs> the the power that she has in her forearms is crazy, mm-hmm. just crazy, just like buzzsaw. It's like she hit a per- beautiful buzzsaw kick. Um, but from town and then picks up, picks up a falcon arrow driver. Mm-hmm. And that was the finish to the match. Like, holy crap. Like that, just a kick to the face that like the jury style buzzsaw kick. I was like, Oh, I thought it, I, I, I thought you could get the pin right there, but then she picked her up and hit the falcon arrow driver to get the win. But like, holy crap, great match from both mm-hmm. these women. And Tom mm-hmm. Nakano moves to 16 points. The mm-hmm. like, like I said, 14 is the magic number, and you better have a tiebreaker over anybody else that gets to that 16 if they get there. And yeah, Tom Nakano is 16, the first person is 16 in the Red Stars, and there's still two matches to go in in the in the block, though, mm-hmm. with the potential for more people to get to 16 with her. Uh, mm-hmm. There's at least four, three more people that can get to that point. Possibly mm-hmm. after her, so that's the thing. What your what are your thoughts on this match? I really enjoyed this match. I felt it was a, another faction versus faction, Cosmic Angels versus Colors, as Colors is the the sub faction of yeah. Cosmic Angels. The Colors would, Angels, come on. Yeah, the colored. I would almost say the reluctant participants of the Cosmic Angels. Mm. They uh, they don't always seem particularly happy to be there, but you know. When you have your partner sealing your bikini tops, I can understand you would be a little unsatisfied with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I definitely felt that this match was very, very hard fought, very, very emotional. And it was so nice to see the show of respect between these two women after the match, you know, having their little um, private moment where you can tell they're just thanking each other and expressing the gratitude for an incredible match. Um, yep. These very girls... Much so. Yeah, they, and especially the Cosmic Angel girls I'm noticing, minus Unagi Sayaka, um, very, very humble and very, very emotional when it comes to their wins and their losses. Um, Nakano, obviously very excited that she won, but you could still see the emotion in her and on her after the match as they did go to the back. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this match. And again, it did set up Nakano uh, to that 16 points. Yeah, and Ooh. and again, but like, like still to come is Hameka at fourteen. You have Micah at fourteen, and you have Suri at fourteen. Three potential, mm-hmm. and you have Hameka taking on Micah, her tag partner. So they're yeah. So you got two people that could possibly take a win. If either one takes a win, they will tie with mm-hmm. Tom Nakano. And I gotta check one thing. Uh, da, da, da. Sorry, don't mean to be weird. No. But okay, I'm again. I'm always weird. But yeah. So with him, the, the next match being Hameka versus Micah. Tam not gonna. Tam not gonna. Tam not. Uh, da, da, da. Hameka, 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 and Hameka. And sorry, I apologize about this. I'm just trying to. So Tam actually beat Micah. So Micah cannot. Take cannot again, and nor can Emeka. So actually, they're fourteen. Even if they get to sixteen here, mm-hmm. they they uh, Tam has the tiebreaker win over both of them. So mm-hmm. actually, this mat, this next match of uh, Hemeka and uh, Sak- Hemeka and Micah is pretty much more or less just for point rights and see where they can land to position themselves at the end. But boy, howdy! <laughs> oh boy howdy was just a banger this was i i think another slobber knocker my friend these girls mm-hmm. were hitting each other you wouldn't even know that they were tag team partners at this point no they were no, just you wouldn't no not even a little they were just going hard at them that was literally the only thing i wrote was man these girls kicked the crap out of each other um just a four like they went to the floor and there's just I wrote it here. The forearm exchanges, then mm-hmm. just running each other in the post. And it's just there. And then uh, Hemeka hitting a backdrop suplex on the floor. It's just like, ah. 
It's just, but the, and again, like I have a crap ton of notes here. <laughs> Give them to us. <laughs> yeah. And again, I wrote all, all of these notes at my work. Whenever I'm my break. <laughs> just know oh, that. In my, and I'm, I have a hard trouble. I'm having trouble right reading my writing. That's the biggest <laughs> thing. But yeah, the clotheslines, like a mecha with a beautiful clothesline, then hitting a sliding D for two. Like, ah, oh, the, the, oh, the genius of the sliding D. Can't, can't, can't. <laughs> uh, uh, Tomohiro Ishii special baby um, uh, Himeka getting the KOD like her finisher like the torture rack into the slam onto the fa onto mm -hmm. your face only gets a two she's won multiple matches in this tournament with that move and it only got a two but like uh, Micah got a delayed superplex. She lifts her up and she's just holding her there while standing on the second rope and delayed superplex to the to the ring. Uh Rainmaker from Hemeka. Beautiful hey, Rainmaker. Like Rainmaker. <laughs> like I but just the pot like uh Micah getting her power slam into the sidewalk slam. Mm -hmm. uh, again, another move she has won multiple matches in this tournament with. Only gets a two. Mm -hmm. Like just Everything they're doing was crazy. And then both women hit, hit each, like to come at each other and just both connect with like a form or a punch. I can't, I don't know exactly what it was, yeah. but each connected at the same time. And they both just went back and the ref counted to counted them out at 10. Mm -hmm. Neither could get to their feet. Mm -hmm. We got a draw in this. Micah and Hameka both finishing with 15 points. So crazy. Such a crazy yeah. match. I was I was honestly not expecting um another draw in in this um tournament, but man, no, was I happy with it? <laughs> because no, again, I, because again, cheer if, for? if either one of these women had won, Tom was okay because she had the tiebreaker mm -hmm. over them. So, but this ending it makes them both again look hella hella strong, hella tough ladies. You know these girls are our former goddess of stardom champions. You can obviously see why. So I just looked at the standing from from night from after the night twenty. Mm -hmm. If say had Micah won this match and then Suri won her match, mm -hmm. it, if, if all that had come together. With Tom winning hers, each one had a had a victory over another. There would have been a three way tie. Oh God! So it, it's a re like these wins and losses mean everything in these tournaments, man. Like mm -hmm. they mean so much. Mm -hmm. Like it, one little loss, you made a mistake one night, could cost you in the end. Could cost mm -hmm. you again if you're going up against like you're pointing against that person it, it it's insanity but yeah um it, it, but again wonderful hard-hitting just brutal match from both women and again both finishing with 15 points yeah, i i can't say enough good things but we're gonna go on to what was the final match in the red stars block this is match will determine who goes on to the final match in the main event of the night. Will it be Suri? If she, if Suri gets the win here, she has 16 points and has the tiebreaker victory over Tom Nakano. Mm -hmm. If Risa, if Risa Sarah is able to defeat Suri or take her to a draw, you then have uh, Tom Nakano alone in first with 16 points. And she takes the tournament mm -hmm. or takes mm -hmm. the red star block of the tournament. So like, do you want to break this one down for us, Mel? I mean, this one was one where it was like, it's do or die. Um, mm -hmm. Especially for Sarah Risa, the, for her, I noticed, I don't know if you did also her entrance. Um, I, I always watch their intros. I always like to see if they have new gear or new stuff for mm -hmm. new music or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Usually she's very slow. She's very precise. She comes in, she does the face cover, she walks mm -hmm. in. Um, 
very authoritative this time when she came in. She she came in rather quickly. She she posed as as usual, but she was moving with quite intensity. She was moving with urgency. She knew how important this match was. But again, so did Sori. Um, Sori because, coming in. Hmm? Yeah, it, it's not just the fact that uh, that Suri could go to win this tournament. It's the fact that Risa Sarah picking up a win in this gets mm -hmm. possibly can get her a title shot. That is mm -hmm. the biggest part of it. It's a possible title shot if she beats the champion. Exactly. So, uh, that's and, the biggest and thing you see with a G1 every year. If when you see the people lose to the champion, they usually get a shot down the road at, at a future show before January 4th. So like mm -hmm. <sighs> And with Risa Sarah, she is the, I believe, the the leader of prominence. Um, mm -hmm. You know, definitely so. um, coming in as your first tournament, you want to show up and show out as the leader of your tournament, especially when um, when you got your your stablemate in Suzu Suzuki, who is having just, an impressive tournament. Yeah, wrecking as much shit as you are. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. This match was exactly what I expected, especially out of Suri. Um, she was kicking like crazy. We were seeing that power out of Suri, but we were also seeing that power along with that sense of urgency in Sarah Risa. Very, very meticulous in this match. She's always meticulous, but she does have those moments almost like Suzu where she almost relishes in what it is that she's doing. Yeah, She did not have those in this match not nearly as much she did have a few moments where she was like <laughs> well even if you go like, back to the, the suzu suzuki match she didn't mm -hmm. relish in it as much either because she, she was in an urgency to try to win that mm -hmm. tournament risa sarah doesn't have the urgency to win the tournament here no. but she has the urgency to get a title right. shot exactly like, what everybody was fighting in this tournament for oh, anyways right. Oops. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Knock, knock my empty bottle over, but like it, there was an urgency because she could have a, a title shot before whoever wins this gets there. Exactly. Exactly. I had such a good time with this match. I felt that it was, if you really wanted to get almost like um, uh, sort of a taste, a little bit of a taste of what a potential world championship mm -hmm. <clears throat> match could be like this was the match that you want to watch this is a yes. feeler before you get into the intensity that is stardom uh, wrestling um in the end though sarah risa doing exactly what she set out to do picking up a win over suri and again at she suri has been taking quite a few losses in this tournament i personally would love i'm, I'm looking forward to this match the most out of all of them just to see what it is that Risa Sarah can actually put Suri through in a, a title kind of situation. Yeah, it, it's the, and this win kind of came out of nowhere because mm -hmm. uh, Suri had an arm bar then transitioned into like a the, just a really weird hold. Mm -hmm. And Reese's there just kind of flipped her and slammed her down. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even like, I mean, she just kind of like went and got the pin. Yeah. Like, it was an out of nowhere win, but like there were so many good spots. Like Reese's Sarah, I love that she uses the cradle shock um, mm -hmm. made famous by uh Motor City Machine. Um, why can't I say his I name telling? now? Pardon? Is it Shelly or Saban? No, Saban. Chris Saban used that as his finisher. Has still uses it to this day. Mm -hmm. But I love that she uses the cradle shock. But like, just like Suri at one point hops up, grabs a Kimura, pulls her down, and then transition in, it transitions mm -hmm. it into a triangle choke. Yeah. Like just the striking in this match was bar none amazing. Mm -hmm. But like, it, and there was another spot where it was like Suri hit the German. Then Risa got up, hit an air raid crash, and then a suit, and then uh, Suri gets right back up and hits a super kick, and then Risa gets right back up and hits a Samoan drop. Like it was just crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, but it just I I I am thoroughly impressed by Risa Sarah 
who had a wonderful, wonderful term. And I apologize about not putting the point totals up, but Surya had 14, Risa had 13. Mm -hmm. um, and Risa Sarah ending this, actually outpointing the champion. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Yeah. She outpointed the champion in this. Yeah. So I'm going to go down the list again. You have Tom Nakano, officially the winner of the Red Star block with 16 mm -hmm. points. Then you have Hemeka, Micah, and Risa Sarah with 15 points. It means Risa Sarah ties her stablemate, Suzu Suzuki, for points mm -hmm. in this tournament. And then right behind them is Azumi, Utami Hayashishida, Koguma, and, and Suri with 14 points. Koguma being in that mix is huge for her, yeah. in my opinion. I think that just brought her right up to that level. I think a minimum white white belt, a minimum white belt, if mm -hmm. not being in contention for that red belt. And mm -hmm. then at 12, Saki Kashima, again, great place to be for her. Because, yeah. again, 12 points is a really good showing. Again, some of them were cheap wins, mm -hmm. but – Great position to be. And then my Sakurai with nine. And then Mogumo Kogo and Unagi Sayaka with four. And it actually shows Unagi Sayaka down at the of the block completely. Even mm -hmm. though she had the win over Kogo, in my opinion, yeah. technically should Without be ahead of her. Yeah. But again, mm -hmm. this may also be the the uh, uh alphabetical, might be that too. Uh, okay, but yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's it's it, it, it's a heck of Heck of a tournament, and and, and what the, both those blocks produced, right? Like you, you really have to uh, to really be impressed by every single woman that worked in this tournament, and to see what they put together. And I gotta be really impressed by whoever is booking this company mm -hmm. to do what they did to end up. With that big of a list of people that could potentially win on a night, mm -hmm. uh, I was it, the only thing close that came close was I think the D block and the potential that were, there might have been the subway tie in the D block at the yeah, G one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that all came down to the final night, but like, mm -hmm. no, I just looked at it and I went, "Wow!" Just I was just impressed by all these women. But we still have one more match. Main event of the it's evening. It's a huge match. And I forgot to put the little banner in. So give me one. <laughs> I'm just adding the wording here. Dun, dun, dun. And the finals obviously being the uh, red star winner there, Tom Nakano, and the blue star winner, Julia. Mm -hmm. Got it right here. Tom Nakano taking on Julia. This is... <laughs> Like I, I didn't. I thought Hazumi was coming out of the Blue Stars block. I really did, and I honestly, like we have said multiple times, we had no idea who was coming out of Red Stars because it was such a close block the entire way. Mm -hmm. I am very happy to see it come down the way it is. I'm a huge fan of Tom Nakano, and she's going after this to get her shot at her first ever red belt. Like to go after, like again, not her first shot ever. But to get the, the chance to go into the December 29th show to take mm -hmm. a shot at getting the red belt for the first time. And Julia in this, I, I think for her, it's a very personal factor getting mm -hmm. into the it being in this match because who's the red belt champion? Who's the world of stardom champion? Her ex tag team partner in uh, Surrey mm -hmm. who abandoned her. Mm -hmm. And left and created God's eye. So there, there's a lot here to unpack in what these two women are doing. Along mm -hmm. with a 20-some minute match that these two women killed it in. Mm -hmm. That too. Like, there, like, I can't do it justice by breaking down the match itself. Because it was just... Again, like I said, I think it was which I can't remember what match I was saying that would have been match of the night if it that wasn't really a match. <laughs> yeah, the Julia, yeah, the Ju Julia Suzuki, Suzuki match. But this was, I think, the epitome of everything we've wanted to watch in this turn. We've been watching the tournament mm -hmm. all culminate in such a perfect match. And mm -hmm. I and bias, bias, perfect, perfect winner. Yeah. In Julia. 
Mm -hmm. I think been having a rough go of it, huh? She was very up and down through the sprint. She had losses early, then some wins, mm -hmm. then some losses, but came back and really rallied through fighting Su Suzuki and then taking it. Like, I, the thing that impresses me most is, like, you watch the G1. Their final match, their final tournament matches are one night. Mm -hmm. And then the semifinals were the next night. And then the finals were another night. These girls worked all worked their final matches of the tournament and then come back at the end mm -hmm. to to wrestle again. Imagine mm -hmm. if Suri had won. She would have went back to back. Yeah, that's very true. So you really have to look at it and like what these girls do. Like they each had pretty hard hitting matches. Like mm -hmm. Liz Julia went 15 minutes mm -hmm. and Tom went to think like nine or ten, but it was a pretty rough match yeah and then they come back here to go over 20 minutes and j both women just smack like I, I have to give it out there was one point where each one was just smacking each other across mm -hmm. the face mm -hmm. like holy holy crap there's it, actually it just, one moment like that where i actually was like they just had a zohan moment where they were both kneeling on the ground and they were kind of like very, very close yeah. to each other. And then like just the camera was focusing more on their faces. And then suddenly there's Tam's foot going across Julia's Oh, where face. they were sitting. Where they yeah. were sitting and then Tam just started kicking. And then yes. Julia, Julia caught the leg at one point. Yeah, at the very end. Bar. So Tom's trying to fight and she just starts kicking with her other leg. Julia in the face, but then Julia just tweaks the leg even harder. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like, dude, that was an, a very impressive. So I saw Tom mm -hmm. do that one other time in this tournament. She was on the ground and somebody was sitting in front of me. She started kicking her in the face. Yeah. But like, dude. It was like, very much a Zohan moment from for me there. It was like, was that your foot? Yeah. Dipping <laughs> with your foot. It was really funny for me. But um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, with Julia also having a bit of a rough go of it, not just in regards to um, the tournament, but also in regards to um, kind of like the personal business of the stardom factions, her and Sori mm -hmm. were tag team champions. And uh, right about the time that um, Thecla and Mirai came in, I think they only wrestled two weeks with um, Donna Del Mondo before Sori and uh, Mirai jumped ship to form God's Eye with uh, uh, Amisore. And then um, um, shortly after, we saw uh, Natsupoi also um, abandon Donna Del Mondo to join Cosmic Angels. So this main event and this night in general was probably a very, very emotional. Cra uh, literally a, a crowning moment. Mm -hmm. A cra literally a crowning moment. For <laughs> crowning moment but for the end. Though. The, the <laughs> end of this match was insane. Like you had uh, essentially an uh, uh, Tangaloa's ape shit by Tom mm -hmm. only gets a one, and then Falcon Arrow by uh, Julia barely a two. Mm -hmm. Then a knee to the face by Julia and her hammerlock uh, uh, ape shit style move for two. Mm -hmm. And like, it still can't put her away. And then she picks her up and just drops her with a modified brain buster. Mm -hmm. It looked like, like a modified yeah. Falcon arrow brain buster style move. Like she was a Falcon arrow to the side. So it was almost I like a brain so buster. Too, yeah. And takes the win. And you could just see the look of relief wash across Julia's face when she mm -hmm. got that win. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely wonderful like and then the aftermatch part was what was really messing with me and then actually they showed mina shirakawa while she was on commentary for the main event too mm -hmm. so and then uh it so she was handed a big ass check or something and then <laughs> and the publisher's clearing check i don't know what it was and then she <laughs> left the back. Like, she left for the back mm -hmm. and then like a minute or two later, Tam Nakano and a bunch of other people walk out. And then um, Julia comes back out with them af after them. And they all were given trophies. Mm -hmm. And then obviously Julia was given her crown and her cape. Mm -hmm. And uh, just oh, like a wonderful That's moment for her. But one of the parts that really tugged at my heartstrings was after – 
they got their trophies and everything. Tam walks out. And like I said, with a couple of her, her matches on, uh, mm-hmm. was it night uh, 18 and 19, mm-hmm. and her losses there, and then her happiness when she won earlier on in the night, and she mm-hmm. walks out just like the most dejected look I've ever seen on somebody's face leaving mm-hmm. a professional wrestling match. She looked like somebody just pulled the heart out of her chest. Like it, it, she looked like, I, I don't know how to describe it. She looked like looked somebody defeated. just like, yeah, it, 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 it made me like, honestly sad when mm-hmm. Tom, uh, when Tom had like, uh, like had that look on her face. I was oh, honestly yeah. sad for her. Cause I thought she had such a Cinderella moment after those two losses on nights, night 18 and 19 to come back and get that win on night 21. It was just uh, like heartbreaking for the girl. But then Mm -hmm. I was so happy to see Julia win because this gives her, and again, I, I very much expect Siri to defend this tight or title successfully because I'm, I, I am almost sure that come December 29th, I will be watching the show as soon as I can get my hands on it. I really hope there's a live stream for people outside of Japan. Please start them. Let <laughs> Please, me watch it. Yeah. I, I, I will stay. I will get up. I will watch it at 1 a.m. I don't care what time it is. I want to watch <laughs> it live. Please give me the ability over here in North America to watch live. We've got our Rogue I, Energy drinks. We can do it. We can do it. We Yeah, Rogue Energy. Check it out, please. Rogan.com. <laughs> um, soon to be sponsors of this show, hopefully. We, um, we will start running sponsorships yeah, for them probably we very, will, very soon. Very soon. But yeah, um, you got to like really be impressed in what's coming for mm-hmm. uh, for Julia. The mm-hmm. fact that she's going to get that, re- not like it's not revenge, but you know what I mean? She gets that a t- ability a to, to, to really stand across the ring from Suri mm-hmm. and really hash out what the hell happened. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I, I look forward to that match because like mm-hmm. as much as Risa Sarah is awesome. And the, and who's the other ones? I can't remember who the other ones that beat. Uh, Micah and Himika. Micah that and beat Suri? Uh, Suri oh, lost. Oh, that beat Suri. Oh. Suri actually lost yeah, to Koguma. Lose. Yeah. Koguma. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tommy Haya Shishida. She well, lost makes... <laughs> to uh, uh, Micah. And she lost to uh, Saki Kashima. Okay. I didn't realize she lost to her either. Oh, yeah. She tricked her, remember? She tricked her. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, like... Out of all of those women, like, honestly, I see the, like, I don't see more than maybe one or two title defenses. I'm mm-hmm. thinking one, like, just, I'm again, I'm going off of uh, my new Japan of it all. Mm-hmm. And again, their show is before the January 4th show. Mm-hmm. So they got an even shorter time in between. So I really only think there's maybe, gonna, and then there's, I think, the tag league for them, too. You don't mm-hmm. that's before or after the December 29th show, but don't like know. you have like series, like I don't, I really, I don't see Kaguma challenging. No, I, 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 as much as I don't, as I, Mike is not going to challenge. Mm-hmm. I doubt it. Um, Shaki Kashima, probably not being that she's going to be tied up with her away to tie artist titles thing. Mm-hmm. And then, you have Utami Hayashishida and Risa Sarah as the other two people that beat Suri in this tournament. Mm-hmm. So you really got to look at the fact who would be the best challengers mm-hmm. is Hayashishida, mm-hmm. but she has the this going on mm-hmm. coming up, right? So that's why I think at some point between now and December 29th, Risa Sarah is going to challenge for the championship having gotten the win. But the story for December 29th is the former tag team partners facing off for the red belt. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I honestly truly believe that Suri will be 
the champion come December 29th, even though she mm-hmm. will have a banger of a match with Risa Sarah if it happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hope it does. I really hope it does. Someone get me Andre too. booking on stardom. Come on. Come on. Call me up. Come on, stardom. I'm, re- I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Literally, just get, you can just take what I just said. I I just, just, send, me, just, send, just send me a send me some money. Come on, pay me. Just just send us subscribers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Even better. Even better. Yeah. That being said, it sounds like we have finally come to the end of the five star Grand Prix tournament. But that doesn't mean the end of Andre and Melball. We are still going to be yapping your ears off. Every more, week or other more, week, depending on how many there are. Yes, there's Saturday lots more stardom. Stop, so they they have they they are having at least two to three shows per week. Again, mm-hmm. we watch them whenever they'll make them available to us. But I will watch the crap out of any of them. <laughs> so that being said, if you are interested in watching Stardom, you can go to their website www.stardom-world.com. The cost is about nine hundred and twenty yen. I pay about ten dollars um, here in Canada. It's totally worth the cost for. Uh, for watching some good wrestling and you do get some access to some of the older matches and some exclusive stuff on their website as well. So you want to go check that out. Yeah. And everything's classified very well by year on their site. Very so it's much. just, if you, depending on what year you want to watch, it's very easy to find. And you, you are probably what I'm hopefully watching us right here on YouTube at Andre and Melba wrestling talk. You can also check out our other channel, Andre and Mel- Melba wrestling talk shorts. Don't forget about that. Cause we're, we break all of our videos are broken down over there, but you also hopefully might be checking us out right here on backbreaker media our, our good buddy run by your good buddy, Mike, the ref who you can watch him on twitch uh every wednesday for his any AEW dynamite sidecast and multiple other times they'll be playing awesome video games and just having a good time with his friends and like wonderful wonderful gentlemen thank you so much for supporting us with everything you're doing Mike. we really appreciate it um you can check us out on twitter at collins melball and at that canada guy on instagram at melball collins and at that canada dude um i Coming up on uh, October 28th, I will be go- running solo unless I find another tag team partner for the night because Mel is going to be at the R- R- Real Canadian Wrestling Show watching uh, the wonderful uh, Gabriel Estat take- taking on uh, Raiden the Destroyer in a casket match. And blah, blah, blah. I will be actually doing a watch-along for the Rumble on 44th Street taking place in New York City from New Japan Pro Wrestling. So if you want to join me on the, our, my twi- our Twitch page, Andre and Mel Ball, you can check check us me out then. It will be starting roughly around 5.30. I'm not under sure. Check my, check my socials. I will be sharing out exactly what time that's all going to start at. So please, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And, and- everything else. Yeah. Yeah, and just so you guys are aware, we will be filming some more episodes for next week of Chop Talk, where we're going to be having a special guest, a local super fan, um, on to talk about some memories of wrestling and how he got into watching wrestling. And we're also going to be breaking down our uh, show that we saw last night, the Top Talent uh, Wrestling Academy show that featured Charlie Haas and... um, Dark the magnificent Sh- Mitch Clark. The magnificent Mitch Clark and a pumpkin. You don't want to miss out what we got to say about and, that. And, and a and a dark chic. And a dark chic with a pumpkin. Yep. You don't want to miss out on that. So that being said, we have come to the conclusion of the stardom review here. I am your Melball. Shout out to Astrid. That is your Andre. We will catch you next time. Adios. <laughs>